world full of mundane podcasts. One show rises from the ashes. Critics are calling it outrageous. Podcasts as we know it will never be the same again. Tonight, prepare for an epic journey where every step could be your last. The destination, a place where no maps can show. The mission, to rise above the rest. The danger, unimaginable. The reward, a shit ton of weed and laughs. It's going to blow your mind. This is To Be Blood. So sit back, turn up the volume, grab your weed, get ready to light those blood. Gentlemen, the following podcast is scheduled for one fall. That's right, we are back to be blood podcast episode 14. I'm here live in studio with my co host and your favorite Frank Knox. Say what up, Frank. Yo, what up, PZ? I got the Scott. What's up, podcast world? And you know me, that P to the double EZ, baby, and we're live. And a brand new location here, the 2B Blunt Studio, it's going to be huge. And in case you didn't know, it's fucking raining, it's shitty outside. Oh. You know what I like about the new studio, though? Is that I can't oh. see the windows. <laughs> yeah, Good you don't point. know what the weather is down here. You can't see the windows, which is the nice part about this, is that we have no clue what is going on outside. You know? Good point, PZ. Good point. You know, we got a big show today. We got to talk about a huge historic week in wrestling coming up next week. I can't wait. I'm excited. It's a big one. We got the Area 51 raid with the result of that to happen over the weekend. We got breaking news in the wrestling world. I mean, today was full of huge breaking news. I'm sure we're going to hear some of it from uh, Don Kincaid. And we have a new game show debuting today right here live on the 2B Blood Podcast. That's right. What's up, fellas? <laughs> This fucking guy always busted my balls. <laughs> What's up, Scott? What's going on, man? You're back, man. You're back again. You become a regular here. You yeah, know. Yeah. I'm surprised you I, lasted this I'm long. I'm not surprised. You know, we're talking wrestling. The Scott will show up. I know. know. So, but that's great. I'm glad he's not sitting there trying to get our autographs, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the worst part is he knows where we sleep, so he can show up at any time. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. God damn it. But before we get any further, if we're going to move this show along, we have our number one priority. We don't call it the 2B Blunt Podcast for nothing. That's right. So we have the ceremonial lighting of the blunt. It's time to get lit. It's time to get litty, even though we got the burrs cracked. You know, we got the burrs cracked. I'm checking this bunk ass unicorn farm. Unicorn farm? I thought you had like a fucking course, bro. What is oh, that? It's made with some like Nielsen Sullivan hops. How come I didn't get a unicorn gimmick? I got this Miller Light. You don't you want, want to try it? Should... It's not, you know. No, I don't want to try shit. I'd give this shit a one. A one? If out of what? Five. Five. Wow. Are you on tap now? Yeah. One out of five. That's crazy. So you're going to give the Budweiser more? 
I'd give that a five. Oh, wow, see, uh, all right. We're drinking the Steve Weisers. Good old reliable. You can never go wrong with a Budweiser. You're yeah. right, man. You're right. I mean, if Stone Cold will drink them, then fuck, so will I. And then the IPAs, different years come out different. Some of them are good. Some of them are bad. This, you always know what you're going to get. That's right. Well, it says drink fresh. Tell me, you, this, was this bought fresh? Like, I bought this it. This has been like sitting I in the back of the fridge, week. right? I bought it a week ago. A week? Okay. A that, week ago. A week ago. Fresh. Damn, yo. Well. Before we go any further, we got the beers cracked. So the next thing we got to do is the ceremonial lighting of the blunt. So I ask you two, are you ready? Scott's ready to get a contact time. <laughs> there, there's no windows down here. That's right. Oh, there's shoot, no yeah, ventilation, yeah, baby. And we're going to blow our rips right in his face. Ooh, with I like it. Setup, you know, your rips are going to go directly. That's right. You can see Scott perfectly here, you know, which is great. So you're going to get, you know, right in huge rips and you're right in my direction. So I'm going to make sure. <laughs> You know, and shout out to this dude, Rob, on Facebook for hooking up with the, uh, the podcast table, bro. Shit's mint. This is nice. This is nice, man. It's a nice little gimmick, yo. We're going to work around it. You know, we'll, we'll make it work a little better as we get going. But right now, you know, test that up. It looks real nice. So before I go any further, I ask again, are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. ready. <laughs> <laughs> then for the three of us in this podcast studio. And the hundreds watching at home and listening on our website. Ooh, let's get ready to smoke it. Tell them, Frank. And if you're not down with that, we got two words for you. Smoke it. Break it down. Yeah, baby. The first blunt in the new podcast studio. That's big. The best theme song of all time playing. Man, I needed this shit. Man, did I need this shit though? You know? Think you can tell me what to do? God. Ooh, man, what's wrong, Frank? I think I over I overcharged my thing, and now it doesn't work at all. You overcharged it. I left it going all night. I mean, overcharged means you should have been good. Is it off? It won't turn on, no. Damn, bro. But when we go on break, we go on break. I got my spare one upstairs you could use if you want. Cool. So we got our strand of the week. This week, we got Platinum Kush. Chang, chang. (coughs) Past two weeks, we had Master Kush. Today, it's (coughs) Platinum Kush. Here you go, Frank. Oh, wow. That's all. Sounds Woo! strong over there. That's right. Platinum Kush is, a, is speculated to be a cross between an unknown Afghan variety and Master Kush, which has been our strain of the week the past two weeks. You know? Others speculate it might be the result of breeding between OG Kush and an Afghan weed, so it's kind of up in the air. No one really knows where it's going to be. Let's see Frank's still blowing the rip. Oh, Frank blew it right in my face. Well, Scott, you'll uh, be happy to know uh, that, uh, that, that rip you're getting. His face. That's right. That rip you're getting, Scott. It is a famous wow. strain. It won Best Hydro in the High Times Cup Award in 1994, which is so fucking long 94, ago. That's a long time ago. That's stats, bro. That's stats. That's quarter century. Man, this thing's been around a while. <laughs> it's been around forever. People have been smoking this shit forever. You know what I mean? <laughs> For everyone smoking the good shit. So make sure you know if you aren't already, which I'm assuming if you're listening, you are, that you subscribe and review our podcast online on your favorite method of listening you know, we got the live feed going right now. From what I can tell, it looks solid right now, which is great. Nice. It looks great. You can see the watering in my eyes. <coughs> Me too, Scott. Me too. Whew, man. What'd you guys do over the weekend? Yeah, we're back. I don't think I've seen you, Scott, in like a fucking week. Frank, I haven't seen in a few days. What's good, yo? What's this good with weekend? you? I don't yeah. know. What you doing? Frank, you got any escapades? I mean, you had a huge weekend last weekend. This weekend was kind of low key. Yeah? That's yeah. surprising to hear. I kind of just. Uh... I went and just got dinner and drinks. Oh, with the chick that I went to the Big E with. So. Oh, the date number two. Yeah, so that's, that's you know, going good. So we'll see how that works. I, dig I just it. hung out with her. I dig it. I dig it. But you, Scott? Man, I, I had a low-key weekend, too. I didn't really do much. You know what I did? I helped my uh, my neighbor move out, actually. He's gone? He's gone. Where are you going? No, that, the guy? <laughs> yeah, he's officially in Florida now. <laughs> oh, wow. That no good son of a bitch. He <laughs> took my joint roach. Oh, oh, bro. I was watching a pay-per-view at the Scots. Yeah, that's right. I think we were all together for all And I came all outside, out. and it smelled like a skunk. 
He was like, I don't know, there's skunks under here or something like that. <laughs> what was that? We thought we talked about that like episode two or three. Yeah, yeah he, he, he totally uh, jacked the joint, man. Then he had the nerve to get man. out of his four, all fours and look for it. Yeah. Bro, that guy's hurts. a jabroni. But he's, hurts. Been, he's been living next to me gods for like uh, 12 years now. <sighs> something like that. So what are you guys just going to now have a uh, phone relationship? <laughs> <laughs> He'll probably end up calling me. Watch. We'll see. <laughs> That'd be devastating. He's he's super <laughs> annoying. Well, I know that. Every time we did an event at your house. <laughs> Every time we did an event, it was terrible. This guy would just come up to the back door. We're all sitting and watching in the living room. Knock on the door. Just come right in. Just open the dead door. Most of the time, it'd come off the hinges. Like, oh, yeah. oh sorry, Scott. And they would yeah. just make the stupidest conversations with us. How about that time it, he came in, stood around for like 15 seconds. He's like, oh, I just got to use your bathroom. <laughs> What do you mean he got to use your, his bathroom? You live next door. You're literally a door down. It's, it, and they're connected. These, this is like almost like a duplex. Like it's, it's connected. That guy had a problem. It's connected. That. What do you mean? Oh, I mean, yeah, you're right. It is connected. It is connected. There's just a wall in between them. <coughs> man, yo. <Woo. coughs> oh, man. I'm What'd fucking What did you do dying. this weekend, P? Do anything good? Me and Scott, we stayed off the radar. Oh, man, yo. I'm hurting right now. <laughs> that platinum kush fucked me up. I think I pulled a muscle oh, coughing just no. now. The Uh-oh. patented PZ pulled muscle from coughing from smoking too much loud. <laughs> Bro, I'm pretty sure I pulled the muscle just now. Yo, the, like my armpit hurts. My armpit fucking hurts. I'm not even going to lie, bro. It's devastating. The fuck did I do this weekend? I don't even know. I can't even think straight right now. <laughs> <laughs> can't even Rock, think straight. Yo. We're only like five minutes in. Oh, dude, it's so devastating. Get it together, PZ. I can't. Yeah, I'm hurting. I'm hurting. Uh, but, dude, I went to the fucking Guilford Fair. Oh, nice. How was that? So you bet you went to the Big E last weekend. That's right. Now the Guilford Fair. I went, yeah, we, we, checked out the, weekend. we checked out the Guilford Fair. And now next, this weekend, PZ will be at probably the Durham Fair. Maybe, maybe yeah, not. I haven't weekend, decided. Right? I've done enough fairs already. You know, the Guilford Fair game been, bro. It's pretty sick. I've never been. It's it. Yeah, you know, I thought it was going to be some small little gimmick, and I got there, and it was huge. It was How huge. was the food? Let alone the fair. I don't think I've ever been to Guilford. You've never been to Guilford? Dang. I've been to Guilford. Oh, Jesus, Scott. Damn. Sunshine daydream. <laughs> great, great glass spot. Yeah, that's actually true. That used to be our favorite spot. Yeah, that used to be our favorite spot. But yeah, that's that was pretty much my weekend. I went to the Guilford Fair. You know, I had to do the fair gimmick, and then I, I hung out. You What'd know? you eat over there? Oh, uh, what the fuck did I eat the Guilford Fair? I had some loaded tots. Tots. I had the tots, you know? Bust loaded down. tots. I had some Thimble Island, Thimble Island beers. Oh, nice. Uh, nice. Yeah. Speaking you know. of tots, last night you had what? Tatiana deliver your food? That's Tatiana? Right. Tatiana. Yo, she busted down, bro. Tatiana? She busted down. Bust down, Tatiana. My door dash, yo. Holler, holler at me. Titiana. Got the Titiana. She also got that hibachi, yo. So, I mean, she bust down the hibachi. She busted down. You know, which was great. You know what else happened this weekend? What's that? The Area 51 raid. Oh, Did you yeah. hear that about this? What, on Friday? That's right. Infowars. <laughs> That's right. That show is in, a dud. Info, info, Infowars.com. <laughs> <laughs> you, said, you said it happened, but did it really happen? That's, what, that's <laughs> where I was going to get at, Scott. You know, like, uh, I, I, it was... Uh, <laughs> I mean, they had the hype. The night leading into, I know we were, like, sending, like, tweets and shit back at each other. Like, the people who were live there. If you followed Area 51 Live hashtag over the weekend, there was people at the gates, you know, talking to the guards. Well, there was probably, like, a dozen, you know? So now the next day comes. Everybody's fucking waiting for these, you know, the raid to happen. And Mad Max to come in in his tanks. I don't yeah. know what they expect. So they, they got these pictures they put up. Of, like, the desert, supposedly, and, like, all these cars and people standing around. Like, there was, like, hundreds of people, bro. It looked like it was, like was yeah, going to be something. I'd say even thousands. And then nothing happens. No news. And then the next day, you're getting reports that there was, like, 75 fucking people at the gate. I mean, I predicted that was going to happen. Excuse me. When I first heard about uh, it, it was just something that went viral on the internet, man, you know? Bro, I might have to throw the logo on the screen real quick, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm struggling, yo. This guy needs to put some icy hot on himself right now. I, I, I feel like I pulled something. <laughs> oh, man. Well, like ripped a muscle or something. I was going to go to the hospital. Oh, what happened? Oh, it's, 
That's right. Let's do my podcast. Busting a lung. <laughs> Busting a lung. Smoking <laughs> weed today. Sorry, Doc. We gotta get the trainers in here. Stat. You know. We gotta. We gotta get. Oh. The, we gotta get the boss down here. That's right. Where's <laughs> my? Where's the boss? Just she's the nurse. I think I hurt myself. <laughs> I, I hurt myself coughing. Oh my god, dude! You're gonna need a life alert. How am I gonna come back? Throw the X up. Yeah, man. This, this podcast is over. Damn this it! Is, this is making you look real weak right now. Yo, know? I wish I could explain to you what's happening right now. I know, but you. This has happened like dozens of times. No, not like this, bro. Now that's what you say every time. <laughs> What do you mean? Every time I laugh, it hurts you right here, yo. Man, look at this shit. I pulled something, man. Coughing too loud. What if I busted my shit, yo? You know, I am a hypochondriac, so anything could happen. (laughs) You know? Ah, live on air, he's he's admitting it. (laughs) Listen, I already know I am. Rewind it. The boss will tell you any day of the week, you know? Jesus. (sighs) Speaking of the boss, you know? So, I get home the other day, and this, this fucking device in the mail. This big box shows up in my front door. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I mean, we get boxes from Chewy and Chick as we got the, you know, you know, Bane and Harvey and whatnot, and the cats. So usually it's like a big package of like, you know, cat litter, you know, dog food, whatever it might be. So I didn't open the box. And Jess gets home. She opens the box. And she comes in. She's like, look what I got. She brings this thing over. And it's just like this plastic thing that's like kind of squared off. Okay. You know, you know, it just says like this wide, you know, it goes down and it goes down. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? She's like, it's a squatty potty. Like, what the fuck you mean this? What, what the fuck? What the fuck is what? Uh, a what? I'm like, a what? She's like, it's a squatty potty. You never heard of squatty potty? I'm like, what the, what in the fuck is a squatty potty? And she starts telling me about what the fuck this thing is. So apparently the squatty potty, is not, apparently I'm supposed to know this from a commercial, which I'd never seen. And then we're going to get there. So apparently what you do, Scott, you sit on the toilet, right? Like you gotta take a shit. Okay. And you this thing that that's you know, does like the U shape is tucked into the bowl. So you just pull it out a little bit and you put your feet on it. And you're squatting. Like you squat to take it's like a squat shit. Yeah, it's like supposed to a real shit. It's like a foot rest. So I'm like, wait a second. Yeah. Wait, wait. So you mean to tell me you're supposed to go in the bathroom, (laughs) sit down, put your feet on this plastic gimmick, and take a shit. <laughs> what? She's like, no, you gotta you gotta see the commercial. They, they explain it. Bro, when I tell you about this commercial, Scott, and Frank told me he'd already seen it. But the, I don't know if the audience has seen it. And if you haven't seen it, you gotta go on YouTube because this is this is literally I'm gonna I'm gonna play it for you, Scott. Okay. I'm gonna play it for you, goddammit. I'm gonna put it on. There's this commercial. And it's you know about the squatty potty. And you're never honestly going to believe. You need a foot rest. Though. Like, how long do you plan on taking in there? I, listen. No, it's like no, your, your knees it helps are kind of like elevated. Right. Yeah. So when you're sitting down like this, I guess you're contracting your colon. Yeah. Okay. So when you put your feet up, like, you know, like when dogs take a shit, they squat. Cats, same thing. Animals of any kind. Yeah. It opens up your shit so you're not, you know. So, like, man. See, like, I've always, like, put one leg actually up. Oh my God! Onto what? To the side? What? And uh, I don't know. What? I, 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 like you're doing right now? I, Are you in your sitting stance in the studio I, right now? Yeah, yeah, don't worry, I'm not right now. But like, I don't know. I might have to look at time, no, no, time the fuck out. I need you to see this commercial in and put your foot on other pe- toilets. Yeah, and it's always my right side. I don't know. I so you put your foot up way. on a public toilet while you shit? No, 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 not in the public. Not in the public. This Even is on your own? No, this is yeah. This is just at home. You, you know, do you wash down, like, wipe down the bowl, or you're cool just it, it, stepping it, in your own piss? At know? home, like, forget about it. Like, my shorts are, like, not even, or whatever, whatever I'm wearing, like, it's it's nothing at that point. That the, and then one leg upside. one of the grossest things in the house. I mean, you piss in it <laughs> once, it's got to be cleaned again, in my opinion. But, I mean. Damn, bro. So you put your foot on the toilet, like a dog, taking a piss. Dude, I live one alone. Leg up. There's nobody else there. It's my own uh, rules. Are you just serious right now? <laughs> yeah, what happened to the commercial? So no, Scott started talking about this shit, you know? And L- I got tied up. Literally talking Scott, about this Scott shit. Scott admitted he, knew, he does this. This is where your ice cream comes from. Oh. The creamy poop of a mystic unicorn. <laughs> what? Totally clean, totally cool, and soft serve straight from a sphincter. Mmm, they're good at pooping. This is not but a real But you know who sucks at pooping? No. You do. 
That's because when you sit on a porcelain throne, it's muscle puts a kink in a hose and stops the Ben and Jerry's from sliding out smoothly. Is that the problem? I don't know. Are hemorrhoids a problem? Because sitting at this angle can cause hemorrhoids, bloating, constipation, and oh, a bunch of other things. And seriously, you know on hemorrhoids? I can see that joke down. I got hemorrhoids. You got a picture. This is but what happens when you like go a Prince Charming guy. What? I mean, well, unicorn trying to shit. Ice cream. This has 36 million views, deep. and I've never heard of it. Now your colon's open yeah, and man, ready it's big. for battle. That's because our bodies were made to poop in a squat, and now there's a product that lets you squat in your own home. Introducing the Squatty Party. No, Squatty Party is not a joke. And yes, it will give you the best poop of your life, guaranteed. <laughs> I don't just mean you bloated lords and hemorrhoidal ladies. Yeah. Oh, I'm and even gonna throw up for the for the crowd, yeah. King, unking, king. This is literally what we're unking. watching right now. They can see this on uh, on the live feed. Yeah, so they're watching Can't get the last a unicorn in the toilet right now. With the squatty potty, you get complete elimination. <laughs> this is what Spend we're seeing. Time on the chamber pot. The squatty potty makes you go twice as fast for your money back. <laughs> I scream, you scream, and plop, plop, baby. Maybe you're sore from squeezing out solid globs of rocky road. <laughs> a squatty potty is a smooth stream of froyo that glides like a virgin swan. Plus, when you're done, it tucks neatly out of sight, thanks to its innovative patented design. Truly a footstool fit for a constipated king. This so is like what we're getting being, into. I mean, no lie. Butt, click here to order your Squatty Potty today at SquattyPotty.com. You wish you tried it years ago. This is ago. incredible. And if you don't you know? trust the prince... How about your doctor? Jack, have you used it? NBR, no. Men's Health, Howard Stone. No. Well, this commercial is amazing. It is amazing. They're all crazy about you know? the Squatty Potty. I need to Not to mention the 2000 Amazon commercial. users who gave the Squatty Potty <laughs> five stars. Oh, uh, sure. You can't do that in one take with oh, a straight definitely. face. <laughs> this guy straight faced uh, the whole commercial. Squatty Potty, you fill me with endless joy. <laughs> Leave me. You think it's Matt's guy? It gets even crazier. Potty today. Look at this at the end, right? Your poop as soft as this cookies and cream. But I'm not saying it won't. <laughs> Squatty potty. Oh, there was like it's too late. Or better stool. <laughs> Pooping will never be the same. So I have to ask, and how much did this cost? It's like 25 bucks on Amazon. <laughs> I have not tried the Squatty potty. No. <laughs> I can tell you that. But when I seen it, I was like, I got to bring it up. <laughs> I never heard about it. <laughs> you know? And then, not only that, I did see some other crazy shit online. Did you see the fucking video? These future workers of America, I like to call it. <laughs> what it's, video is it's, this? It's, it's these two kids, these two little children. They got one of them, like, metal trash cans, right? And what they're doing is they're each sw- taking place or taking turns, switching off. One, one kid was staying in front of the, you know, the, the trash can. The other one would hit the pedal. Okay. You know? I think I did see this. I don't know if I saw the whole thing, but yeah, I did I see this. Yeah, I saw it. It's, it's funny. I mean, it's, cute. You it's got, really cute. It's... You got some really good, you know, gimmicks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, these guys, they get the hit, bro. When they get hit, listen to this. Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> oh, no! You know what I mean? <laughs> and then a lot of kids like, no, no, it's your turn. Okay. I want to do more. <laughs> a little bit more. He doesn't want to give it up either. They go back and forth. These guys are like future heat. This should have been ECW back in the day. All right. Oh, that was, that was a weak shot. That was a weak shot. That was a botch. Oh, there it is. The double tap. You know, the double tap. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I'm like, these little kids, bro, are going to grow up to be workers. They're going to be working some indie show, you know, when they're fucking like 23. Jumping off a fucking ladder through some light bulbs. Yeah, it's going to be a trash can on a pole match or something. It might be. It might be. But now I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, wait a second. Like, I was a worker. I bet you that we could sell that shit better than they could. You know? This is my, this is what I'm thinking. So I had to stop. You know, because he's got resources. I think I got to take a sip before I do this. <laughs> I had to stop bringing a metal trash can. Scott, if you would put it in the middle here. Let's see here. Here. It may not be quite the same, you know, but what we're going to do is me and Scott. You guys have at it. We're going to take the shots to the dome. That Frank's going to press that, the pedal. That little trash. I can head. tell Frank's like, oh, when PZ gets an idea. Well, we'll see. We're really, you know, this is really the future work. <laughs> oh, God. It slow goes up so slow. That's because, you know, you, you got to you know, get a nice, you know. Then what? The whole table is going to collapse. You know? we just, we just want to <laughs> see what gets good sound on this. Sounds like I'm going first. You're probably better off just pressing it. Yeah. I'm in prime position over yeah. here. Yeah, that's right, Scott. This thing's tiny. Come on. Oh, boy. All right, let's take, do this. You got to take, take the, the headphones you, off. You, you, you got to commit. Yeah, dude, we're going to, yeah. Like, go Absolutely. Right you got to do this or not? I don't know what's coming. What? What are you doing? Why did you do that? 
Because otherwise it's gonna hit his face. Why would <laughs> you just? What is that? What's on? Scott's done. Yeah, that was you got it. He doesn't commit. You got to put your head into it. Well, this is where the impact. Let's see. Let's see. All right. All right. We got it. Scott, you want another go or what? Gonna be red. This guy's guy the worst cell shop in the world. Yeah, he's, he's the worst cell. So. <laughs> he's even selling so He goes, oh, oh, I know for a buck. It's a good tip, pal. Oh god. Oh god, man. I don't know, man. Well, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad. I'm, oh. I'm glad I didn't get hit in the head with Scott's trash can. This is probably what he puts his foot on when he's taking a shit. Oh my <laughs> god, yo. <laughs> Oh. His trash can. I can't, Scott, that was the worst thing I've ever seen. I am so glad that you were like a fucking, uh, like a Mark instead of a, or I should say a Scott instead of a worker. I'm sorry. I didn't know. I, I didn't know it was a sanctioned uh, contest. Dude. I mean, that was literally horrible. That was terrible, bro. You should like be ashamed of yourself. I mean, what's going on with you, man? You know, yeah. what's going on? You can't take a hit. From a trash can? Your own trash can at that? Yeah, Scott. I mean, he's right. What the hell happened to you? All right, give me one more go. He's, hey, listen, give me one more go. All right. He's asking for another go. Oh, yeah, no, that was bad. On. Ready? Oh. oh, there he goes. He sold it. He, he sold it. He even knocked his chair over. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. This is the greatest day there ever. There it is. <laughs> Oh, he's oh. got the beer. He's hurt. Oh, my God. He's cooling it off. <laughs> it's swelling right now. Scott might be busted open. <laughs> I wish we had Scott do a blade job. Dude, I mean, that would be pretty crazy. If the Scott did a blade job, dude. No, we can't do that. You guys should have did a blade job for that. We can't do that. We can't do no blade in here. You know, this is a, this is a public, you know, show. Everybody wants a, a real thing. So in order to do that, we're going to give them the real thing. So let's get into a little bit of news. Yeah, that's right. We bring you the best when it comes to the news here at To Be Blunt. Right here in the new newsroom. It's going that's down. Right. We're in the newsroom. That's right. You thought KK was a great reporter. Wait till you get a load of this guy. How do you like my new news me, uh, news yeah, I love it, man. Huh? That's great. That's great. It's awesome. That's great. I know it's great. It's kind of epic. It's going a little news though, you know. Starting off right here in our home state of Connecticut. So there's like a, tons of laws going on. <laughs> there's tons. There's tons, Frank. Absolutely, you're right. Tons. There's tons. Tons of new laws and taxes. And like I know we got people that listen in from like overseas and shit. But listen, you guys don't understand. All right, where we're from here is crazy. This guy running our state is a madman. He doesn't know what he's doing. And he's just, you know, taxing everything. We say that about every governor. That's true. Well, this guy's like, this is the Besides biggest. Besides the last one that we liked, we uh, what? He ended up in federal prison for 20 years. Yeah, but like. Uh, what was that, Roland? This guy's given the biggest tax increases of all time. The Connecticut history. Yeah, it's bad. You know? But it's not just the tax increases that's happening. There's some other laws going into effect that we want to get your reaction on. I'll get your take on this, right? The first thing they're doing is they're going to raise the smoking aid to 21. That's good. I don't have a problem with that. You have a problem with that, Scott? I mean, I don't have a problem with it, but... Why? I mean, you have a problem what with time that? Is, what time is when you started thing. smoking? Yeah, I mean, if it was 21, <laughs> yeah. it should be, man. Can you imagine being stuck at 18 right now? You know, you just turned 18. Maybe you bought your first pack of smokes. <laughs> well, and then, like, a, a month later... You should you should have bought a carton then. Hold on to those bad boys. Oh, my God. You know, then they're going to be you know, increasing the minimum wage, which we already talked about. This is about the taxes. I'm going to skip that shit because that's not as crazy to me. So they got new gun laws requiring safe storage of guns, even when unloaded. And they know a minor under 18 could access with no permission, which, I mean, that makes sense. That makes sense. But then they go on to clarify. Pistols and revolvers will have to be left locked in the trunk safe or locked glove box. Lo- uh, locked glove box. Wow, I can't even talk right now. If left unattended in your vehicle. So what do you mean you can't? can't carry 
that's what it sounds like. But I mean, it's the same. What do they expect? The people to walk inside and be like, hey, this is my shit. Like, walk into oh, the fucking oh, Walmart. No, they're just saying if you're going to be in your, not in your car with the gun, then it has to be in one of three places. can't just be on your front seat. Like, hey, come steal me. I mean, I guess. Right? That's what I'm reading. Pistols and revolvers will have to be left in locked trunk safe or locked glove box if you're not in your car. You're right. You know what? Maybe I read it wrong. You're 0 for 2. 0 for 2. That's got to be the, the chest injury. That makes sense. But I, yeah. I feel like, I don't know, some people probably be like, they don't want their gun to get, I don't know, quote unquote, overheated. I dated a girl once. She had a gun. And she, <laughs> she, she brought it into my house. Like, I don't, I don't own a gun, right? Like, I, I, I never have. But, like, she brought the gun in my house. And I was like, what the fuck? She saw this. Like, this is it. This is, this is the end of my life right now. She's going to fucking kill me. But, uh, yeah, her, her claim was she didn't want to leave it in her car because... She was afraid of it getting overheated. I don't know. But this is telling you if you leave it in your car, you could only leave it in your glove box or your trunk. But she didn't want to leave it in there because she thought it was going to get overheated. That's what she said. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There's the big digital tax everyone's talking about where if you got like Spotify premium or Apple music or anything like that, you're getting taxed. You know? People already started What's getting the, any of the tax. So, What's the tax? 6%? I don't know. You know 1%? What? Is it just know. like automatically? Do I have to pay extra attention it's to like, my like Spotify already sent this? out the notifications like to their users? Really? I yeah, I guess I got one. Well, I got Spotify Premium. Do you? Yeah, but I only have it through Facebook. Maybe I don't have it. Maybe you don't have it now. I probably have it. Th- I have Premium, but I don't have probably the e- I don't have email notifications. I don't know. I don't email. like it. I get real <laughs> heated whenever I see a charge from iTunes that I like didn't even know I did. Well, speaking of charges, you got to hear what they're doing with these charges about vehicle theft and minors. New law coming in. Minors charged with stealing or misusing a vehicle can participate in a program to address conditions or behaviors relating to stealing. And the charges can then be dismissed upon completion. So basically, instead of getting like thrown in the juvie or some shit or getting charged, you can just go through this program, pass it, and then it'll let you go. I got caught with weed. I had to just go to a weed program. They let me go. So, <laughs> Dude, like... So what, what, so they're going to steal a car again? Like, you know, like... Hopefully it changes them. You know, the statistics are against them, but we hope the programs rehabilitate What are these lawmakers doing to sit around like, oh, you know what, we should just lesser the the, uh, the charge for minors if they steal cars. Like, why, do we, why are we worried about that? It's like, what? What are you doing, yo? What are you doing? They got some weird shit called upskirting, you know, where they have to clarify what exactly upskirting is, which is like when, you know, snapping... Shots of people, you know. So taking, like, dick pics and titty No, pics like, going, like, you know, people, like, you know, do the nasty shit, you know, where they, like, will snap under a girl's skirt, and they don't know, or something. <laughs> oh, you know? shit. Yeah. Like, yeah, do we really need to... Like, the old trick. I was going like, to say we have to... on your shoes. Yeah. I thought we had to, like... I thought it was a joke that we had to define what that was, and then you would... The way you just looked at me makes you think maybe we didn't have to define... Upskirting. So, so I never saying. heard it called that. I mean... Like you're saying, you can. I didn't take even a think that was a type thing. of pick. No, it's just okay. clarifying what it's what it is. Oh, okay. Which makes you know no sense. So they're understand. they're giving it a definition is basically. So yeah. if you take a picture of someone's dress, it's now called upskirting. Yeah, which is an offense. You know. And now you're going to be fine. That's right. And then if they let you on parole, now everybody's going to know about it. Because with this other transparent processing data law going in effect, if you get paroled, we'll be able to see how. When and why you got paroled. That's great. Look at online. That's great. Which is great. Because how many times has someone got a release and then does something stupid? You, yeah. You know? And then we're all sitting here like, why the fuck did they let this guy out? There's a guy that walks my neighborhood like pretty much every day from like 5 p.m. till 10 p.m. He wears flannels and sweatpants all year long and he never wears shoes. What? He's about 22 years old. And I always walk by him and he's like laughing or talking to himself. And I'm like, I really wish like I knew what this guy, like his deal was, you know? Damn. Maybe he was paroled. Yeah, maybe. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Well, you know what? Now There's I don't one... know. Yeah, it is true. Now you can look it up and find out. But one last thing that really bugged me was the change in, the op- in this opioid clause, which is basically if a doc prescribing more than 12 weeks supply, then they have to establish a treatment agreement or discuss a, a care plan with the patient, which basically is saying like, they can be on the drug for 12 weeks before any kind of interaction has to happen. Which is crazy. 12 fucking weeks, bro? 
12 weeks 12 weeks bro not like we need we have an opioid crisis in connecticut and they're like oh no we're just gonna let them have 12 weeks on this shit three months and you have to, i mean a lot of these people are just getting it and they're not even using it so they're not even getting piss Facts. test you know Facts. and they got 12 weeks to get it in their system i don't know man i don't know and then everyone's dying because yeah. this is what hooks them in the first place. That's right. It's sad. But we got to turn it up because I don't want to get too, too, you know, the tone changed here. Let's go into some funny stuff, you know. Natty Light, you know. The next headline, you know. It's about Natty Light. And we all drank the Natty Light back in the day. Yeah, I like the Keystone. I was a Keystone guy. <laughs> Keystone How about guy? you guys? Yeah. yeah, no, when I was in college, UConn, man, Keystone Light. Keystone, That's what it was all about. Yeah, Keystone. I've had a lot of Keystone in my day. I never drank Natty, really. But this guy in Germany smelled smoke in his car. He was driving. He pulls over. He saw flames come from under the hood. What's he do? He put the fire out with the only liquid he had handy. It was a beer. And it worked. He grabbed the beer and it put the fire out. Like, alcohol. Like, <laughs> it really is I watered have... down beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The firefighter showed up and there was literally nothing left to do. You know? It's just crazy. Funny. That's great. I mean, what a waste on a perfectly good beer. But, geez, I can't believe it worked. It just shows how watered down that shit is. <laughs> the firefighters should have at least replenished them. That's true. That but I true. think booze has to be really high proof to be uh, ignite on fire, right? Like, Bacardi 151, I think, is the only one I know of. Yeah, can you imagine if, like, vodka was the only thing he had in his car? <clears throat> That's true. That's true. Well, you know what? I got one more headline that I want to get into here. It's the New York, Connecticut, and New Jersey governors are meeting to discuss marijuana legalization. What they want to do is come up with a standardized you know, system across states so that like, they don't want people driving like, to New York because it's cheaper, going to Jersey because you know, they can get this but can't get that in you know, New York or whatever it might be. That's genius. Which, you know, is That's okay. Like mafia style. Yeah, it really is. It really but, you is, know, fucking... Yeah. Something like little monster. New York and New Jersey are like, all right, you're going to come here and we're going to have a meeting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you guys have medical. Well, guess what? Now we're going to control everything. <laughs> yeah. It's like the Godfather. It's basically like the Godfather. The New York governor, you know, probably called the meeting, you know, the boss. I was always a fan of the Jersey boys, the Sopranos clan over there. <laughs> you know, could have been Jersey. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? So they meet and in New York and Connecticut. Governors, they agree to do some plans, and uh, they're going to execute legalization, hopefully by 2020. Okay. I mean, that's great. We've been waiting. A little later than they said it was going to be originally. But at the same time, by 2020, with the way these taxes are going up, we're not going to be able to afford it. No, you're not. You know? It's still going to be cheaper to buy it on the street. Obviously, because then they're going to have a flower tax, a concentrate tax, a smoking device tax, tax on the little plastic bottles they use to fill the cannabis with, tax on the carts, tax on recycling the carts. Like, you know what I mean? But they make it expensive. That's, I mean, you go to dispensary, you're paying 60 bucks an eighth for something you could get for 40. Uh, Yeah, of course. Or like 20 in the high 20s if you buy in bulk. Yeah. You know? You're right. You're right. You're right. And I, you know, I just, I just, the I'm glad they're doing it. Of there. course. But it's Jesus, great to bro. have the convenience. Yeah, it is. You know? It is, but it's just. But I'll use it in, you know. Everything's going to be fucking minutes. taxed to death, bro. It's devastating. Yeah, that's the way the world works, unfortunately. I know. I got to get out of America. I got to get out of this funk. You know what we're going to do? I know who to call. Get that's out right. Let's, let's call up Don Kincaid. Yeah. Let's see if we can get the dirt because we have a huge week of wrestling and a huge day today. It's a great time to turn the leaf here. That's right, exactly. We've got to turn the leaf. Saw Scott's <laughs> checking in this one star beer. Yeah, you got the blunt. Where's our lighter? Ladies and gentlemen. Exclusive breaking news. Thank God this guy by up. Kincaid Hot 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 <laughs> And now, renowned reporter Don Kincaid. It's Don Kincaid, baby! That's right, Don. Me, Frank, and Scott here. We got the minutes loaded up. We had a big day of news. I want to hear what you got, baby! What's up, PG Frank and Don? Stop. What's up, baby? What's up, Don? How you doing? Don Kincaid, baby. What's up, Don? Well, I've been hitting the old OG Cook pen 
and I've got some good shit for you. But hey, I got something to start with, and I hope you don't hang up on me because I am going to use these two words, Jose Canseco. Don't hang up on me, okay? Don't hang I love up on Jose Canseco. <laughs> All right, listen, listen, baby. All right, another MLB player, yeah. Jose Canseco, who doesn't have any known wrestling experience, will apparently make his pro his pro wrestling debut. No in way, November. Jose. Jose Canseco. <laughs> this man, he, he's boxed. He's boxed. He's Jose. done MMA. Jose Canseco is an all-around athlete, Don. And don't think for a second he's not going to show out. Oh, that's right. Tell him, Frank. He's searching for Sasquatches. Are you shitting me, Frank? Wow. He's a former Bash brother. Steroid user. <laughs> Wait. Frank's all fired up. Over. Hey, check this shit out, man. Oh. Hey, hey. Now, on uh, November 3rd at World class revolution at it, they present oak romania four live and um i don't even know how to pronounce it add more oklahoma on pay-per-view streaming live on the fight tv and that's where you can see the debut of <laughs> okay okay oh god, oh god you're god. Oh, god. Some respect for an all-around <laughs> athlete yeah and my minutes damn don by the time you get his name out uh, you know, 10 minutes will go by. So, no, Don, who's right, Jose whatever, whatever. Canseco hey. fighting? Anyways, anyone of noteworthiness? It says no opponent is set yet. That's, that's what I do know. I know the date. I know the place. I know the, the I know the federation. But I do not know his opponent. All right, Don. Well, hey, man. Frank is all fired. Hey, hey, Casey. I saw you're coughing up on that uh, King Palm over there. Did you blow up that floral muscle, if you will? Bro, I think I did, dude. <laughs> yeah, I literally, dude, that. every cough and laugh hurts so bad right now. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, I got some more NWA news, and I know I don't really put that out much, but check this out, man. We've got some female wrestlers coming in to their TV taping, and the reason why I am mentioning this is because we have our very own athlete box will be an NWA on the TV taping along with Marty Bell, who's been on Impact Wrestling. He, she's been in WWE. She's been all over. And then we've got Thunder Rosa. Those three females will be debuting in the NWA TV tapings on September 30 and October 1st, baby. You don't seem that excited. Oh, we're excited. <laughs> we're excited. We're just, we're just consulting Peasy with his pectoral injury. <laughs> she whipped. All right, hey, you touch his titty. You, you touch his titty, and I'll continue the news. He hey, didn't hey, touch his titty. Stop. We were trying to lift his spirits, let him know everything's going to be all right. That's right. All right, hey, that, you got a nice support group over there, Peasy. That's very nice of the gents. I, I got this. I'm glad. Hey, since the Scott is in studio, I've got WWE. NXT rating numbers, would you care to take a guess? <laughs> the Scott, oh, on the the Scott has his bold prediction yet again this well, week. Well, for, for last night, I, I'm not, I mean, I'll be honest. I, I actually just looked it up about like 30 minutes ago. Oh, wasn't right. it? It was about, it was like a, it was lower than last week though. It was like a one point, it was higher than a one, right? It was like 1.0 something. I don't know. You yeah, tell me. Yeah, man. They, they, it was a 1.006. That's way down. From the 1.179 from the previous week. I mean, it's not really that much less. Hey, that's a couple hundred thousand viewers, baby. That's a lot of people. Uh, yeah, I guess. But yeah. yeah, but they ran a rematch of the second half of the network as the main event on USA, which was, I thought, a bad move. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I don't understand why yeah, they did I, I, that. The same exact absolutely. stipulation, a street fight rematch. It was the same, yeah. Give me every other type of match, but not the same exact gimmick. Man, I think so the wrong guy we, went over, yo. Totally. So now that we've seen two back-to-back weeks of NXT on the USA Network, now, next week, that brings us AEW Dynamite. Now, on the AEW Dynamite, I got to go to my, I, I got to go to my, uh, uh, hold on, real quick, I, 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 because I just got this breaking news not even like an hour ago. Check this out. There is a lineup. There is an updated lineup. For the debuting of AEW on TNT, and the lineup goes as such. 
Chris Jericho and a, bit, a mystery partner versus the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. AEW Women's Title Match: Nyla Rose versus Riho. Cody versus Sammy Guevara. Adam Page versus Pac. MJF versus Brandon Cutler, and an appearance by one John Moxley. Wow. Don, I'll tell you, though, these guys don't believe me, but I, I predict that AEW is going to beat NXT in the ratings next week. I actually think it is because the buzz has it's the been debut so show. Of course high. they're going to beat them. Uh, oh, now you're gonna give it to me. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa. One. Of course week one, it's going to be, everyone's going to tune in to see what We've it is. We've had two weeks of NXT. Hey, since we're talking this, Scott, do you have a prediction on the numbers that AEW Dynamite will bring in on TNT? All right, so I don't think it's going to be above a two, but I'm going to predict a 1.65 for AEW. You heard it right here. And I'm going to go with a 1.45 for NXT. But I think there's going to be a lot of flipping back and forth. Kincaid, what's your prediction? Hey, Hey! I'm not the Scott. I don't make predictions. I just bring the facts. But Scott, he's, all his predictions are always wrong. <laughs> I do <didn't, I> <laughs> prediction. Don does the spoilers. That's true. <laughs> hey, wow. I got some WWE, WWE news to close this off, baby. All right. What do you got, there's Don? Some, there's some going on behind the scenes with the whole broadcasting scenario between NXT, between SmackDown, between uh, 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 Raw. There's a lot of things changing. And now Renee Young will be getting her own TV studio show on FS1, FX, FS1 called WWE Backstage. And it's set to debut on Tuesday, November 5th. And Renee Young will be joined by none other than King Booker himself. Wow. As an analysis. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's going to be wow. a good time. So the five-time WCW gotta, gotta, champion? Five-time. 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 That's three. Five-time. That's four. Five-time. That's five-time champion. King Booker T, baby. Hey, and check this shit out. Now, speaking of the announce team, both Raw and SmackDown are getting a big makeover commentator style because here we go. With Monday Night Raw going on to Fox TV, we have... The new commentator team will be Vic Joseph, Dio Madden, and Jerry Lawler are going to be okay. the three guys yes, that will be commentating for Raw. Now, on Friday Night SmackDown, it will be Michael Cole. Now, Michael Cole has been doing, I don't know, uh, WWE Raw since 2008. I'm telling you, man, this is Long a big time. move. So Long it's going to be Michael Cole and Corey Graves together. And supposedly, there's going to be sprinkles of Renee Young as a contributor. We will see if wow. that comes to fruition when they come to Fox. That's, oh, wow. They're, they're all going right. all in for the primetime spot. They're taking their A-team uh, announced team, and they're moving over to Friday night. You know, I, I think this is a lot to do with Fox because Fox wants some shaking – Shake it up to them before they hit their airwaves, baby. It looks like they're primed to be the A show. So, That's uh, right. We'll see what's going on, man. I guess it be, will. It has to be the A show. There's no doubt about it. True that. Well, you guys, you take care. You do the... you you. Hey. Oh, <laughs> oh boy, <Fox>. Don. <laughs> you guys take care of TV pectoral muscle. And you... <laughs> oh, guys. Oh, You're God, an God, asshole. Holy shit. <laughs> hey, you guys... Peace out, PZ. Peace, Peace out, out Don. Don. Thanks, Don. My name is Brian Pillman Jr. I am one third of the New Heart Foundation on Major League Wrestling, and you are listening to Peasy on the To Be Blunt podcast. That's right, and we're back. Wow, big news coming off from Don Kincaid. We got announced team changes. We got uh. I mean, <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't give us the one of the latest things that happened this week is John Morrison signing to WWE. I know that is that is huge. What the hell happened with that, Don? You know, I think it was still on the line. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, at least he knew it. But I'm excited for that. You know, that guy's going to be mid card to main event material as soon as he. Comes That's right, in, right. I mean, so he's made a name are we going officially going to call that breaking news right that, here? That is breaking Frank news. Knox yeah. breaking news. <laughs> The return of John Morrison. That's right. 
tell him, Frank. The return of John Morrison. This may be Friday <laughs> on SmackDown. Wow. I had to throw my Don Kincaid in person. The Shaman of SmackDown <laughs> returning? Man. Could it be? Or is it going to be Johnny 205? <laughs> no way, no way, no way. You know? He's not going there to be buried. He's made a name himself everywhere he went, every place he went, man. You know? I don't know. That's true. M- Miz needs something right now. Miz and Morrison might be That would be reuniting. great. Oh, be great. dude, that would be awesome. That would be great. <laughs> it would be awesome. Right. Awesome. Wow. So uh, next week, guys, we have a shit ton of wrestling. Oh, dude. <laughs> the beginning of the Wednesday Night War. You we know? got Raw on Monday. Season premiere. Season premiere. That's right. Season. You know what? I'm glad you brought that up, actually, before I even got that. Why Why is it that if they're broadcasting or promoting the next two you know, weeks of TV as season premieres? I don't know. Were but... these two shows from this past week not promoted as season finales? <laughs> right? That's true. That's all they kept Who asking knows? myself all night. They just try to hype themselves up. They, nev- they never announced the season. If I pull up my... It's always the season premiere of Monday Night Raw. Absolutely. If, if I pull up my TV guide, it doesn't say it's like the season premiere. It says it's like episode like 37 of season, I don't know, what are we on, like 23 or something like that? So whenever, whenever Vince wants the season to premiere, it premieres. It's true. It's true. So now we got Raw Monday. We got now newly announced Impact Wrestling joining Access TV. So they're going to be on Tuesday. All right. Along with the new breaking news from uh, Don Kincaid, the new uh, studio show at 11 p.m. WWE Backstage. Wow. Renee Young. I think they dropped the Booker. ball. They should have called it Sports Entertainment Center, but, you know. Yeah, they fucked up. They fucked up. I don't think that starts till yeah. November, though, actually. It's true. Wednesdays, we got NXT and AEW, 8 o'clock. And, and limited... Commercial breaks. <laughs> That's right, but everyone's gonna watch AEW because everybody everyone, has. Yeah, everybody, everyone, everybody wants to know what it's about. It. You can you can do the DVR with NXT. But the thing is, I'm afraid it's gonna be exactly what I think it is. Well, I know Nitro. <laughs> Nitro, A real maybe. dull down version of Nitro. We'll see. They got, Listen, they we'll got see. ten guys. Their their crowd will be a lot bigger than the NXT. This audience. is true. They got ten guys. This is true, but. Now, I, you yeah. got the boys. I have one to say it. I'm telling you right now, Scott. You want a bold prediction? What's Let that? me give you a bold what you prediction. Got? What do you got? What do you got? You know, from my years in the, you know, the business, which haven't been many, but there's one thing I can tell you. <laughs> All right. There's one thing I can tell you. Is anytime the boys in the back are running the show, nothing good happens. Nothing. All right. Okay. And so right now they might be in the honeymoon stage. Everybody's oh happy go lucky. Him and the young bucks and Adam Page and Kenny Omega and they're all buddy buddy and shit. There's gonna come a time, maybe not this year, maybe not next year, but maybe the year after. Who knows? Maybe sooner. That someone's gonna fucking disagree, and there's gonna be, you know, beef. You're gonna have heat all over the place. And then and then Tony Khan's only gonna have so much money. To dispose, to fix these errors that they will inevitably make, you know, until he says, I can't do it anymore. You think so, huh? I don't know. I feel like who they have on the roster is just. That's right. If you got, listen, if like you don't agree, call dudes. in. I mean, anything can happen. We, we, we've we've seen it all, right? So I say, anything call in. I want to hear everyone's opinion on this. A six zero three eight four seven one one zero. What is your opinion of AEW and, and and the company as a whole? How I mean, long are they going to last? You I don't know? think too long unless they start signing. They have any developmental deals going? Yeah, any, they have feeders. I like. I, not, they don't have anything. They have nothing. What are they going to work off of? If you ask Kenny Omega, they don't need developmental. So wow. what, you're just going to watch the same eight guys try to headline a pay-per-view every single... <laughs> I, I think they got I think they got something like, in their back pocket. Who wants to see I Christopher think, Daniels? Nobody. I think they got a lot more of a roster than we know of. Than who what wants to see what Marco Stunt? Us. Nobody. Well, I definitely don't. <laughs> we know <laughs> Scott doesn't. <laughs> I don't we know. know damn well the Scott doesn't. Who wants to see LAX? Nobody. No. I hear you. I mean, how, as a fan, are we supposed to keep up with all these shows? Then, of course, Friday, SmackDown. 
I know, and we have obligations, right? We Thank God Thursday podcast day is free. <laughs> that's the only day that's free. Luckily, we ended up picking Thursday. So right. No, we really got lucky we there, got actually. Lucky. I know, right? For all you viewers out there that uh, you know watch wrestling every other day of the week, now you have our podcast to tune we into. We only as well. knew Monday and Tuesday were good when we started. We're live, that's just like right. everybody. Else. Look what's happening? We're like, oh, we'll do Thursday in case any news trickles in. That's right. We said Thursday because that was the last day of, sh- of TV, NXT. Yeah, I know the network. You know, I don't know how we're going to keep up with that shit on the podcast. I hope Don Kincaid's going to step up, you know. I can't be doing all this shit. <laughs> we're going to have to pick and choose, you know. You know. We're going to have to fill each other in. Well, which show's got the most banking on it next week? You know. AEW 100%. I don't know. I think. I oh, well, think... no. We said last week it is going to be yeah. SmackDown. I, I think SmackDown. I mean, on the major network. We already saw what looks to be, you know, a, a look into the future with different camera angles this past week and everything. So I wasn't a big fan and, of and that. Brock Lesnar's first televised match, not like, just not camera angles. They had all new cameras in fifteen years. They had all new cameras. Well, they're putting all the chips on Brock Lesnar. Well, which one are you looking forward to most, Frank? I'm looking forward to. I want to see what. AEW has dynamite. I don't think SmackDown's going to change too much besides the change of championship. Yeah, you're probably right. That's probably going to be the only significant change of the show. Yep. We'll see. I do find it interesting, though. There's a pay-per-view two days after the SmackDown premiere. And on the SmackDown side of things, I don't think there's any SmackDown matches listed for the pay-per-view. They're doing pay-per-view matches for that first show. What do you mean? Like I'm saying, like they just did Shane McMahon versus Kevin Owens ladder match. And that's not a Hell in a Cell. That's on the debut on Fox. Right. You got Kofi Kingston. Paper, it's not. Nah, look it up. It's on SmackDown on Fox. You can ask wow. Kincaid. Um, and then Brock Lesnar and Kofi Kingston for the title. Like, there's no WWE title match for Hell in a Cell, but that title match, it's on SmackDown on Fox. Plus, you got a number of legends well, how next about, week. Is there any SmackDown matches announced in Hell in a Cell? Maybe, maybe we're going to finally see the split of brands. I don't think even if officially have they said, like, Bailey Charlotte yet for a rematch. I don't, I don't think they have. No, yeah, I they think have you're right. Sasha, so maybe we're going to officially... Yeah, so the Raw side of things is all set for Hell in a Cell, but the SmackDown side of things, I don't know. Maybe it's, it's kind of up in the air. Maybe up with Raw. Maybe it won't be a SmackDown. Maybe they'll just split pay-per-views like they used to do. Wow, really? That's, separate, a, that's one way to look at it, yo. I mean... They could run a pay-per-view every two weeks. Every time they try that, they always seem to go back the other way because they lose buy rates, I guess, or no quote unquote rate. network subscriptions. There's I guess. no buy rate when you have two. When you're going to have two pay per views a month, that's I mean money. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I hope they, but they, there's no way they can keep up with two pay per views a month. They're going to have to switch off. There's no fucking way they're going to run two pay per views a month. If Why they, not? Because you're running a whole pay per view cycle on a separate show. You know, yeah, so. but there's no way they're going to be able to keep the audiences with that. I don't I'll, know. I'll tell you, if they do do separate pay-per-views, it's better for the talent because we see so much talent left off of pay-per-views because they're dual-branded pay-per-views. If they go back to separate pay-per-views or separate brand pay-per-views, yeah, we'll see a lot more of the talent that was deserving to be on those shows. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's why not? They have the talent. Here comes AEW trying to knock on the door. Here comes Impact. Holding on by their fingernails off a cliff, and they have a chance to we shall really see. shine their talent because otherwise these guys are going to get pissed off and leave. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're right. But every time they've done brand pay per views, they started in 2003 and it lasted till 2007 before they started going back to dual pay per views, and then they tried it again in 2016 after the initial was... that the second draft, and then. That only lasted till uh, I want to say April of last year, 2018, before they started going back to a dual brand pay per views. I don't think they've been knowing what they were going to do the past year. I mean, <laughs> at all because they would, you know, they pushed that wild card rule and now it's not existent anymore. Ah, right. It's well, that's why we got the draft coming, right? We got the draft coming. All right. You know what else we had? Fucking new theme debut on fucking Monday. I don't even know how to feel about that theme. Listen. <laughs> I wish it was released so I could play it. You know, that's the worst part about this. The the OC comes out. They got this brand new theme. Terrible. If you had it, you would only need like a 15 second clip because I feel like it's looped. I can't. I couldn't. I don't even know where to look for. I mean, it's terrible. It was so (laughs) bad. And it was like some knockoff Rage Against the Machine or something. You know, 
It wasn't even needed. I think there was like one line of lyric, and it was just repeated over and over again. I don't remember what it was, but what was it? I, I said oh, I don't, don't remember. Oh, what I thought it was. you said you do remember. Damn, yeah, I wish I actually had it. You know, it's got to be out on YouTube or something. It probably is. Yeah, there is. There's a little gimmick for it. You know, people are hating on the internet. Wow, but that, that sorry. means they didn't sound get, effects. They didn't get rid of Ash, of AJ Styles theme though, right? Like, no, it was just no. Because no. his theme's fire. No, it was but definitely it's a, it's a group theme, but it definitely replaced, I guess, the last it, Anderson. Gallus it's just a rage against the machine. Well, it's Eric and Ivar, the Viking Raiders, getting set for a heavyweight tag team. Of course, class. that's the Viking Raiders theme playing. There we go. Yeah. Okay. I even I was like, who the fuck is this at first? We're coming for you. We're coming for you. We're coming for you. We're coming for you. I don't know. Listen, there's been a big problem, alright? Since CFO left. It's been nothing but terrible themes. And I'm going to start with, uh, with f- number one, Buddy Murphy. What yeah. happened? That uh, guy had a great, great theme. Mm-hmm. He had he a did. great theme. Now it's the carb. And now it's terrible. Yeah, since CFO left that I know of, what we had, Buddy Murphy had a new theme. I know Cesaro's I- theme is shit. Yeah, Cesaro got yeah, that. That weird- still been CFO. I'm not sure. I don't know. Because that was back in May. That theme is shit, dude. And I know. It's terrible. Cesaro. I hate it, um, too. There's a, Eric it. Rowan with his new theme, which I don't mind that one, but then... Um, it's terrible. What do you mean? I don't know. That shit's terrible. Everything's terrible. <laughs> Everything's <laughs> terrible. This, this OC one, though, was just bad, man. It's bad. Uh, CFO, they came up with some gems. Obviously, the legend will always be Jim Johnston. Always. Yeah, but, like, I just... <sighs> he had the most fire. And they're messing up with him right now because his last theme that he ever created was Baron Corbin's, and now it got mixed huh. with that King gimmick this week. Well, you want to know what? I got some news, breaking news. Speaking of fucking, what's his name? Jim Johnston. He actually is doing a theme for one of the guys in uh, say, Ring of Honor. Say, oh, I thought you were going to say AEW. Oh, no, Ring of Honor. In Ring of Honor, though. That's Interesting. right. PCO. Get out of here. PCO's got a theme coming up. He's debuting this Friday. You know, he, he you know he did his original theme back in like 95 for yeah, Jean-Pierre course. Lafitte. Probably yeah. did the Quebecer theme too, I'm sure. Yeah. That, so that might have been Jimmy Hart, though. I don't Jim know. Jim Johnson's coming back, maybe making a you know comeback. But like on the indie scene, yeah, on the indie scene, of course. Well, our, I mean, ROH isn't exactly indie, but I mean, it's just the, the new guys they have now. Whoever's doing these themes is terrible, bro. And now the OC is their latest victim. And it just makes me think like there was just so many good themes back in the day, you know, so many good themes. Like, what makes a good theme memorable? You know, like nothing they're putting out today is like. You know what, man? Like, I was thinking about this earlier, and it's like, if you, we listen to music today, it's like, what's good on the radio today? Nothing. Right. And it's they're trying to get that audience of the people in ages when we started watching wrestling. That's true. Man, there's been some great themes out there. And if there's any callers out there that want to tell us uh, their favorite themes, yes. call in. What's the number, please? 860-384-7110. I want to know. I know you guys want to know. The audience... What is your favorite theme? Definitely call in because I'd love to hear what the two B blunt universe thinks. You What's know? your favorite theme? My favorite theme, bro. I mean, I thought it was pretty obvious what my favorite theme is. You know, degeneration. Break it down. That is a great theme. suck it right here. You know, that's that's my shit. That's my shit. It's a classic. a classic. It's not even a Jim Johnston theme, is it? No. No, that's uh Who is that band? Because I know they the they, Chris Warren band, I think. Yeah, it's not the Chris yeah, Warren. Yeah, that's not the Warren, right. Yeah. You know? I tell you what, that's that good shit. But you Scott, what's your favorite theme? Man, you, you put the Scott on the spot. I didn't really think this one through. Um in recent times, I mean like I really dig the Usos theme. Is there to be new honest one? With you. But um all time, man. The down since day one theme? Undisputed yeah. Earth theme is really good too. That is great, right? Um, now. But we're saying all time. Yeah. Yeah. See, <laughs> like, I've got, like I play this one in the gym, man, all the time. Like I get real hyped up on this. I can see this guy walking into the gym, <laughs> swiping his key card. <laughs> oh, that's true story. 
Yeah. Put his sleeveless Jimmy um, Seafood Under Armour hoodie <laughs> or his Project Rock gear ready to do some he's got he's, he's definitely Dude. got that Under Armour Dwayne Johnson you know, gimmick. You guys are reciting my Tuesday of this week right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, um, you, Frank. Yeah. And for me, there's just nothing like that glass shatter and that Stone Cold yeah, theme, man. man. It's my favorite theme. Theme, hands down. But which one? E- even the remake with Disturb was good, too. Yeah, though. which version of the Stone Cold theme? The original, man. The glass shattering. The glass? Yeah. There we go. This is it. Oh, hell yeah! Give me some beer! Some vodka! Tequila! More beer! More beer! More weed! More beer! And that's the bottom line! Cause Stone Cold says so! And there's nothing like hearing that theme live. That's right, Scott heard that uh, that MSG. That's right. Probably not the only place either. I've heard it live <laughs> you know? in my life. You know, about shows when I was a child. Yeah, it's true. Me too. You're right. You know, Raws or yeah, yeah. House shows when it comes yeah. to the Civic Center. I really, you know, I wish. There's so many themes but, that. I are... mean, I seen like some rumor of speaking of Stone Cold that he was, you know, he was ready. He was in ring gear. He was in ring shape. You know, his nerves never felt better. Oh, that's right. I heard about this today, too, that There's he said little, that he might be up for one more match. One more match. Oh, one yeah. more match. He's had some great matches. One more I think, match. I think we're going to see him one more time. You think you so? You think so? Well, speaking of matches, Yeah, though. why not? That's a good point. Why not? He's, he's on the, you know, he's got his show on USA. It's doing great. Yeah. And who knows? Maybe the season finale will be so many fights at WrestleMania. <laughs> Maybe so. He gives him a stunner right there in his, you know, his show. Yeah. But we'll see. It'd be great to see him. Favorite theme, though. True. True. I think I need to take a smoke break. We've been going at it for a little bit. You know, we're going to go ahead and run the run some theme. You know, something good for the break. We're going to light something up over here on the 2B1 podcast. I'm going to wrap myself in some tape. <laughs> I'm going to check this fantasy football trade that just went through in my oh. league. And I'm probably going to veto it. No, oh, there you go. All right, 2B Blood Podcast. We'll be right back. Straight out of down and stop. May have had here. May have had here. May have had here. May have had here. I love the smoke we in 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 here. May have had here. May have had here. May have had here. May have had here. I love the smoke. Then you pass it. <laughs> oh man, now you're blasting. 
That's right, 2B Blunt Podcast. We are back, and you guys know what time it is, don't you? What time is it? It's time for my match of the week. Oh. That's right, baby. And now, out of Raw, out of SmackDown, out of NXT, my match of the week took place last night on the USA Network. Donovan Dijakovic versus Keith Lee. Love it. You're talking. Love it. Two heavyweights that worked like they were cruiserweights. That might be a match of the year, Canada. That was... I that knew was that was going to be your match of the week after I saw that. It's not, not the first the time, man. It. Not the first time. <gasps> oh, oh, no. No. He's wearing the other pectoral got, muscle. Oh, no. That's a sneeze. <laughs> we got a live sneeze on air. This McMahon would not be proud. Yo, shit. <laughs> That's it. But yeah, their first match. <laughs> Great. Their second match. PZ might be done Better. for. Oh, man. I might have Yo. to raise his arm three times. He might be tapping Dude, out. He was... can't even raise his arm. He probably going to raise it. Gonna be like, it ah! was an incredible. It was incredible. Let me tell you, that match. It was they think that the the Canadian destroyed the moves. I mean, it was just back and forth. Dude, the cells, the second rope. I know, but how many Canadian top? destroyers does it? You know, that used to finish. Yeah, it wasn't even the. That other. used to finish a normal man. That did kind of make me upset when he didn't kick out, or when he did kick out. I mean. You know. It's like a DDT these days, bro. It's like <laughs> the Canadian Destroyer is the new DDT. Yeah. It's upsetting. But overall, though, yeah. I mean, you were just so invested into the match at that rate. It didn't matter. You Man. know? It didn't that, matter. Yeah, I agree. Dude, chokeslam on the apron. It was great. I could watch those guys fight every single week. It was great. I know. I, I, wonder, agree. I wonder what Kenny Omega thinks of uh, Donovan getting your match of the week. You know, I don't give a shit what Kenny Omega yeah. thinks. You guys didn't watch Being the Elite this week. He calls him Donovan Dickhead. Listen, Scott, let's make the record clear here. Yeah, I've never I watched watch it. You guys don't. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Me neither. That's right. I don't know. If anybody does watch Being the Elite, let us know. Because I cannot. Me and Frank can be the only ones that don't watch this show. Now, a six zero three four seven one one zero. Do you watch Being the Elite? I don't know. I don't. Oh, hell no. That's Come right. on. Oh, if, hell no. If you hell. watch it. Listeners, call in. Tell them what they're missing out. I don't know. I don't have to. I, like, I'm not going to watch a 20-minute YouTube show. You know, these guys are putting themselves over. That's all it is. The young bucks, like, fucking. <laughs> That's my opinion. If you disagree, let me know. 20 minutes. I mean, you know? I don't know. You know what else kind of pissed me off, though? What pissed you off? Oh, Dude, God. Don't even get me started. I know. Listen, what happened at the end of Raw was a travesty. All right. It was a travesty how the whole thing went down. And I don't know how the price Scott's going to disagree. But I know you agree with me, Frank. I hate this it. This was bullshit. Listen. All right. I'm all for the fiend getting put over. You know, I'm all for the fiend looking strong. But I'm also I'm not for the, the champion made it look like, uh, you know, a piece of, you know, like a, like a chicken shit. Piece of cheese. Piece of cheese. Piece of cheese, man. Piece of no, che- good. you're just like a, we looked like. Yeah, I mean, he was just kind of screaming out there. But what are they doing with Seth, bro? His, his promos have been horrible lately. Horrible. This guy does not come off like a baby face. He just sounds like a little bitch. You he know? has to, like, I mean, 
I don't know what they're... He's, like, on that thin line, man, from heel to face. Baby face Rollins needs to go. You know, he needs to go. And, I, you know, and, and I just don't understand, like, they did the whole thing last week with, you know, Fiend showing up and Rollins in the corner cowering, not looking at him, too scared to look, open his eyes, and the Fiend's all in his face, and it was cool the first time. They did it again. They did it again. First, they gave Seth Rollins plenty of time to crawl out as this approach... Crawling over to Seth took so long that Duke could easily just slid right out. Or stood up and kicked him in the head. Right, and, right, and then curb stopped him. Guys, come on. By now, you've never learned nothing's logical in wrestling. It's got to be logical. There's no psychology. <laughs> then it just looks like shit. That's the whole point. I don't know. But you know what? I think Seth might be losing the belt this Monday. I mean, there's a title match on Raw. It's kind of random. I, I think maybe The Fiend cost him the title. I don't know. That could happen, and then that, and then it's still Seth and the Fiend, and then you don't have then, to worry and about. And then he uh, could destroy Rey Mysterio. If if all right, if no, because they're not going to put the title on Rey Mysterio, bro. You don't think so? No way. I don't know. No way. Things have happened. No way. No way. That would give Seth the clear, and it would be okay for the Fiend to just fucking roast him at Hell in a Cell. And then that, and then you don't have to worry about you're worried about the fiend getting the title and not caring about yeah, it. Yeah, it doesn't give him like now a, it doesn't matter. He just care about destroying Rollins. Yeah, it doesn't give him like a distinguished championship win. He beat Rey Mysterio. I mean, yeah, he's cool, but it, it's a season premiere, right? A lot of new stuff are going to happen. We got new commentators. We got a new theme. We're going to have a new set reportedly. Maybe a new champion as well. I think there's going to be some switch-ups in the championships on both brands. The draft's coming up. And that's these guys want who they want. And I, who they worked out. Who knows? Maybe they'll put the belt on Mysterio because, like, I think, I want to say his contract comes up soon. I think he signed, like, a unique contract when he came back. Oh, yeah, just to fight whatever And Dominic it's like the same thing with Revival, right? Reportedly, the Revival has in, uh, they, they have not re-signed, even though they were just given the tag team titles last week. That's, that's I don't, I don't understand Yeah, I mean, that. you're, you're a Scott. <laughs> you're you're a Scott. What's Listen, his contract up? We'll see what we'll talk and about like next six Thursday. Months? Oh wow, he didn't sign a contract. I mean, dude, sit out a whole year in the NFL. This is also very true. And you're talking about a contract that expires in six months a year. They'll get. I don't even think out. it's six months. I think it's less than that. You said something about it ten episodes ago. Oh, about Mysterio? And about this contract? Which one? Which one? Mysterio? Revival, revival contract? Revival? Yeah. Well, I think it's up soon. But I, I don't know. You don't know. It's got to be a couple months. You've been saying that for a while. It's not public knowledge. That's because he's just reading these dirt sheets. It's not public knowledge. It's not like you sign up, you go to ESPN. (laughs) Oh, you know, Antonio (laughs) Brown was just signed for one year, $26 million. Like, you don't hear about the contract. It's all hearsay. I don't know. Speaking of hearsay, let's create our own here. (laughs) I want to. What do you think is going to happen going forward with these pay per views now that we're getting? You know, Frank mentioned that the draft was coming out. Yeah, he called a month ago. We so call, they're trying we to. It first. That's right. They're trying to establish these separate brands, right? right. What do you think is going to happen with the pay per views going they forward? They can't be co branded. There's no way. I don't know. I mean, we know Survivor Series is going to be Raw versus SmackDown, so that's why they have to do the brand split so they can have separate brands, Raw and SmackDown. So they'll do they're not Raw doing versus SmackDown just Survivor for that Series. Purpose. They're doing it because you know I think Bischoff. And Heyman are going to be given a fair chance to run a show. But here's the thing. I think with the season premiere of Raw, with SmackDown going to Fox, I think we're going to see more pay-per-view quality matchups that we would expect to be at a pay-per-view. Like, for example, Shane McMahon and Kevin Owens ladder match. You'd expect that to be at Hell in a Cell. But we're getting it on SmackDown. Granted, it's the premiere of SmackDown. But in order for them to keep the ratings trending up, right? That's their goal, right? Right. I think we're going to see those pay-per-view quality matches on the actual... Raw and SmackDowns. And then what the fuck do you sign up for the WWE Network for? To watch downgraded matches? I'm not saying downgraded. <laughs> but if we look at the business when it was at, at its Damn, you right? savage. If, if savage. But, but, how are, but how are they? They want subscribers, right? I mean, it, but if we look at the business when it was at its highest point, right? 20 years ago, like right? 99, 2000. Like those matches that were on pay-per-view. I mean, still the same matches were like main eventing Raw. And people were still buying the pay-per-views and still watching Raw. I think there's so much talent they could put on a tremendous show for Raw and SmackDown once they do the brand split legit. But they have to have teaser matches on Fox 
to gain new subscribers, and I think money is the motive here. Of course money is going to be the motive. I mean, we'll see. They, I mean, got, but, they got their money from the networks, but they want more. Right. So that's why I think like we're going to see two title matches, right? We're going to see a title match on Raw, a world title match on SmackDown, and I think we're going to see more of that on those shows, just like it was 20 years ago. Where those titles were always defended on Raw and SmackDown as much as they were. That's true. We were getting like Hell in a Cell matches on Raw and shit at one point. Right. Yeah. You know, they were busting out all the stops. Shawn Michaels and Kane, hell of a cell, right on Raw. You know? Now you don't get that kind of shit. So Shawn Michaels and Kane, that never happened but on Raw. Most of them. Wait, what? Shawn Michaels versus Kane, hell in a cell on Raw? No, that never happened, dude. First Shawn Michaels and Kane match was at Unforgiven 2004, and it wasn't in a hell of a cell. Oh, my God. Anyway. Damn, yo. Don't that you wish we happened. had, like, a one of those? If a caller could call in and tell me I'm wrong, tell me. You know what I'm going to have to do next week? I think I'm going to have to bust out my fucking Google Home. <laughs> We're going to put it right on the table. We're going to ask it questions every time Scott makes, you know, a fact. To see how close he is. I don't know. I mean, there's not like, Wikipedia don't pick up on that shit. Google don't. It's hard to find some of those they, questions. It's got mad, but, well, mad you, sports stats on those things. might yeah. have been thinking oh, yeah. about, though. So we could have said, like, who, when was the first time? I got one came. right there. We can plug it right here. What was the first Sean. Hell in a Cell match on Raw? I'll tell you. What was it? It was a tag match. It was, yeah, uh, we got one right there. You want to put it, it in? It was Austin and Undertaker against Kane and Mankind. <laughs> Maybe that's what PZ was thinking of. Maybe. Maybe. It's gotta Maybe. be Kane. God, it's gotta be Kane. It's gotta be Kane. I know what I gotta get. I gotta get that Frank Knox top five. Frank, you got the top five loaded? Yeah, I got my top five. All right, let's hear it. The Frank Knox top five, baby. Frank Knox top five. 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 Frank Knox the best goddamn five. name in the business. Frank, we got the top five for this week. Let's hear it, man. Number five, I got Becky Lynch. Number oh. four. Number four, I got Sasha Banks. Number three. Kofi Kingston. Number two, Chad Gable. And your Frank Knox, number one. <laughs> oh, it's the shit. Fiend. It's the it's fiend. The oh. fiend. I mean, it's, it's the fiend, baby. He's been running rough shop through everyone in that roster. That's true. That's you know? true. It's a solid top five. You got some women on there. I had to put Becky Sasha 5 4 because that, that rivalry, man, is getting hot. It's getting great, dude. Yeah, yeah. I'm still not feeling the the whole Becky hand waving gimmicks, but I, she's definitely slowly doing more heel shit in her matches, which is at least you know something. The only thing she's missing, Peasy will tell you, is a finishing move. That's right. Oh God, that's Becky needs a finishing move. Yeah, real Becky. Bad. Yeah. yeah, Becky needs a finishing move so badly. You know that that this armor is not effective. It's not something you can hit. You know, quick with impact. You need that thing. And I was talking to Frank Scott, and I said, Kevin Owens, he should never be using the stutter. That pop-up power bomb was perfect and exclusive to him, and it was people people would associate with that. Right. Now, I talked about this before. He uses the stutter, and then you got to question whether the pop is for the move or for the guy, right? So now I'm thinking they had the whole gimmick with Becky Lynch. She's trying to be the man. She's pretty much like a woman stone cold. She hit the stunner on him. Oh, you know, in the, the uh, Steve Austin show, whatever the fuck it's called. Yeah. Straight up Steve Austin. Why not give Becky the stutter? That's a good point, That man. would be great. That Boom! Would be, it's too Boom! late now, but yeah, if she had it, that would have that been It's good. not too late. She doesn't have a finish. Yeah, what's she got? Now, the disarmor? What's going to do it now? Kevin Owens does it. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. I'd, I'd put them in an intergender match, and then I'd have her go over. Well, her Kevin. Not at all. He's not just all. a whiny bitch. We had Kofi on there. I don't know why. He's the champ. Yeah. I'm just. I mean, I don't, why? I don't, what do you mean why? I don't know. I don't know. Just because he got beat down by Brock Lesnar, you know, he's still the champ. My man, my man, the Brock, Brock Lesnar. Ah, was Kofi even on SmackDown this week? I don't even remember. No, there was, there was no Brock Lesnar. No, no, there was no Brock. But was Kofi on the show this week? Brock. Uh, that was last. Brock Lesnar beat him down. Not. No, I'm talking this about Tuesday week, night, last though. week. Yeah, that was last week. So that was on my last week's top five. Yeah. Brock Lesnar didn't make an That's appearance. Right. He doesn't have a championship. All right. Well. He'll be number one. 
Once he gets that strap back, though. Huh? Rest assured. Oh, you know what? Kofi wasn't on it. He just had an interview with Michael Cole. That's all he did this week. And he was in your top five? He was for in an interview with Michael Cole? That's right. Okay. Shit. Well, Scott, I hope you're ready. If you want to call in and disagree with Frank Knox right Championships now. play a factor in my top five. Listen. If you want your own top five, put it on the internet. Uh, man. I got to let people know. I hope Scott's ready. We're about to be oh getting into here. We got the new segment coming up next. Can't, can't wait for this. We're taking Stump the Scott to a new level, and I know no one's ready for this. TJ Howell the Third. You're listening to the Two B One Podcast with Pizza. He's the smartest. You don't have any brains. I'm from Hollywood. I have the brains. He's unstoppable. Nobody in the whole world can beat me one-on-one right now. It's the hottest game show around. It's Stump the Scott. And now, your host, Bud Griffin. Hey. Everybody, it's your host Bud Griffin here, and we're here for another episode, or actually the debut episode of Stump the Scott. That's right, the Scott's here, and I love that theme. Oh my god! Let me tell you how this is gonna work for the audience at home and the people here in the studio. Scott, me, Frank, and anybody who decides to call in. Okay. All right. They're gonna be able to ask you a question. I will put thirty seconds on the clock. And you have 30 seconds to guess that answer. You can answer before 30 seconds is over, or you can wait for the 30 seconds to be over and use the full time to figure out your answer. Okay. Knox is setting up the timer over here. No, no. Uh, it looks like you were. Sorry. He's, he's got the timer. That's okay. right. So the question is, Scott, are you ready? That's the question. I have 30 seconds to answer that. Yes, no. I'm ready. <laughs> That's the debut. <laughs> this guy's got jokes. Hey, all right. <laughs> That's right, Bud Griffin here. And we're about to ask the Scott a question. So, Scott, question number one for you. Question one. How many do we got, Bud? Maybe at least two. Oh, we'll okay. find out. Let's, let's, let's you want to call into the Stump the Scott game show right here. Call in 860 384 7110 and you can stump the Scott. So, Scott, first question. Okay. Who is the oldest Bella? I ask one more time. Don't answer yet. Who of the Bella twins is older, Nikki or Brie? You got 30 seconds on the clock, and your time starts now. Who's the older Bella? Oh, my God. I I honestly have to guess. It's a 50-50. In 30 seconds, I can look it up, though, right? No, you cannot uh, look it up. You can't look anything up. No, you have to sit here and you have to guess who is the older Bella, man. Nikki or Bree. And I've watched most Bella, uh, total Bella episodes. 15 seconds on the clock. Oh, my God. All right. I'm going to go with Nikki. You're right. <laughs> Nikki Bella is older by 16 minutes. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Next question comes from Frank Knox. Uh, uh, I have a question. What do we got? What do you mean I have a question? <laughs> I don't have a question. All right. You're a dumbass. <laughs> I told you to get a question ready. All right. Fuck it. We're going to keep going here. I got a question. For the Scott right here on Stump the Scott. Are you ready, Scott, for question number two? I think I'm ready. All right, Scott. Question number two. What? Was Hulk Hogan's original gimmick? One more time. The question was, what was Hulk Hogan's original gimmick? 30 seconds on the clock, and your time starts right now. So, I mean, in what company, though? I I have to ask this question, because, like, is it going to be the Incredible Hulk Hogan, or could it be Sterling Golden? Like, is is one of those correct that I said? You got 30 seconds to make a final call. (laughs) But you said first gimmick. Like, first gimmick, WWF? What was Hulk Hogan's right. first gimmick? I think you want me to say Terry Boulder. I don't T- Terry Boulder, I'm going to go with, I guess. I don't. Okay. Well. 
Many wrestlers try out different names before landing on their signature name. Hulk Hogan is no different. His ring name was the Super Destroyer. Oh, All right, whatever. If you want to call in and play Stump the Scott, 860-384-7110. It's going to be one hell of a time right here. Stump the Scott. Frank Knox, do you have a question you want to ask? The Scott? Um, I, I don't think so, man. Come on. I'm one and one. We got we to gotta settle something here. Um, I mean, I would have to look one up. I mean, I have a question. I just don't know. Who Scott, are you ready for question number three? Yeah, let's go. Before John Cena was in WWE, he appeared on an NBC television show. Do you know what that television show is? 30 seconds on the clock. And we're going to start that right now. I'm assuming this is a show that Bruce Pritchard signed him in when he was in UPW in California. But God, I couldn't even tell you the show. Uh, I don't know. I'm just going to have to guess. The true story of professional wrestling. <laughs> Which is totally wrong. Sorry, Scott. I got bad news. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, I fucked up. Well, I got a question for him. Oh, all right. Frank Knotts. Frank Knotts. Right. Frank Knotts got a question. <laughs> Frank, go ahead and ask your question. Right, Scott. Who did Sla- Sergeant Slaughter defeat to win his only WWF title and... At what pay per view? All right, so that's oh, a two part question. Easy. Hold on, Scott, okay. you got 30 seconds on the clock. Okay. Your time starts now. So the event was Royal Rumble 1991. You're right. All right, All right. <laughs> and Sergeant Slaughter defeated the Ultimate Warrior. Can't give it to him, buddy. He got it right. And I believe he got smashed in the head with a scepter by Macho Man Randy Savage. A ah. trifecta. He even answered the, <laughs> the bonus question top. there. Wow. Well, that was one hell of an episode of Stump the Sky. Come back next week as we try to stump the smartest mark around. I'm your host, Bud Griffin. Thank you once again for playing Stump the Sky. Yeah, this is Ty Shine, and you're listening to How to Talk. This is Ty Shine, and you're listening to How to Be Blunt with PZ. <laughs> this is Ty Shine, and you're listening to a new episode of How to Be Blunt with PZ. <laughs> this is Ty Shine, and you're listening to To Be Blunt with PZ. How in the fuck would you listen to anything else? On a question. Yeah, yeah that was true, but that's, I honestly, it wasn't. John Cena that appeared in the show. It was the Bella Twins. It was another Bella's question I ended up with. <laughs> and it was called Meet the Folks. Oh, uh, PZ. I wouldn't have gotten that. I say I would have stumped him, but PZ I fucked up. PZ went on the Bella Army trivia blog page. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, was pulling all the stops. I'm sorry, Bud Griffin went on the... <laughs> I was pulling yeah, all the stops. Damn, yo. What a high ass show. Bud Griffin. <laughs> That's right. It's only the greatest fucking game show of all time. Stump the Scott. <laughs> I love it. I fucking it. love it. That was something else. Man, it just was a show, dude. It's been a crazy show. It's been a crazy show. We smoked the fucking big L Platinum Kush. I'm hitting the weed pen. I'm getting we're high we're as hell. We're in the new podcast studio. We're going to finish it up. I won't be able to help you this weekend because I'm going out of town. Oh, oh where are you going, Knox, man? going to town. I won't see you guys. He's going to meet another woman. No, I'm going to Portland, Maine <laughs> for the weekend. Oh, nice. Nice. With the big he woman. Biggie, Biggie Langston's wife. The Biggie <laughs> Langston. <laughs> Damn, yo. <laughs> Frank, I seen you send me a Snapchat the other night. <laughs> you were wearing a fucking Bane mask. <laughs> Dude. The fuck is that about? <laughs> Awful. What, what is that, a fucking breathing apparatus? <laughs> CPAP machine, bro. CPAP. Sleep apnea. You slept next to me when we went to WrestleMania. I thought I started that. That's right. You kept me up all night. all night. I woke up to take a piss. I see you fired up on Facebook talking shit about me. This son of a bitch. Well, shut up. Shut up. Oh, my God. We had just been out all night. 
We're up to God knows when. Oh, man. We only yeah. had a few hours to actually get to sleep in. Yes. Yeah, PZ was hurting, too. We were oh, it was really long over the next day at Mania. It's a yeah. mess. It's a mess. I think yeah. it was like it's uncomfortable to wear, bro. So bad, man. I So far, I'm um, 0 for 2 on wearing it. Both nights, I ripped it off my face <laughs> while I'm sleeping. <laughs> You know, while I'm sleeping, and uh, I woke up, I put it back on, and then I, I do sleep for it the second half. So your subconscious is basically telling you this fucking thing sucks. Yeah, dude. I Like, I feel claustrophobic. I have to learn how to breathe. It just, it reminds me of a Darth Vader. The of Darth the, Vader? Of the Darth Vader sound, like the way it sounds, yeah. Bro, you know what would be real sick? As if you could fucking smoke weed out of the CPAP machine. Oh, man, yeah. It was like a vaporizer. Dude, right? If you could use it as a vape, you know, to inhale like weed oils and shit. Dude, you'd sleep great. Dude, you'd I, sleep great. And I'd be able to sleep with it on probably. I wouldn't be ripping it off in the middle of the night because I'd be so lit. Litty. <laughs> Scott, what do you think about that idea? I don't know. It sounds interesting. No, you know what? I bet you it does. Then check this out if you think that's good. Are you suffering from sleep apnea? I wake up tired every morning. Are you tired of not getting enough sleep because your CPAP machine sounds like this? Well, then I think I have just the solution to ensure you are not only comfortable, but also get the best night's sleep you've ever had in your entire life. Please tell me more. This mask is unbearable to sleep with. Forget CPAP machines. Throw your current one right out the window and replace it with one of our exclusive CCADS machines. Wait, what's that? CCADS stands for Continuous Cannabis Airway Delivery System. This is a revolutionary system that not only ensures you get proper airflow, but you also sleep as soundly as ever before. What? So I'm going to sleep and stay litty all night long? That's right. Our CCADS mask delivers high doses of cannabis directly into the mask as you sleep. Man, that's the most genius thing I've heard in my life. Don't be a fool. CPAP systems are old and outdated. Try the next generation of sleep apnea relief and get your hands on a CCADS machine today. Call now and as a bonus, we'll throw in an additional mask so that special someone in your life can sleep through the bullshit too. That's a $420 value, free. Just pay shipping. This deal won't last, so call 1-800-WEED-SLEEP. That's 1-800-WEE-DSLP now. It's the highest podcast around to be blunt with easy. Man, that was amazing. That was amazing. That was great, man. I gotta get one of those. <laughs> we yeah, gotta get should. you a, gotta a C-Cads. Upgrade. Yeah, I gotta upgrade. Gotta upgrade to the C-Cads, bro. Fuck, fuck, the, fuck, fuck. The, fuck that guy, Ken, who sold me the CPAP. I need to see that. That's right. C-Cads. 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 I need a C-Cads machine, too, yo. You never wake up. <laughs> you just That's you be in a fucking coma. Coma, yeah. <laughs> coma. Straight coma, yo. Oh, man. Well, tune in for next week. We got... Episode 15. Next week's going to be a big episode. Yeah, yeah we got a huge week of wrestling we're going to have to cover. I hope you guys we, are ready. Better take your notes. We got a lot to cover, but now we got to preview SmackDown. We can't. It'll be like a whole six days after when we review it now. Damn. That's a good point. Wow, we're not even going to get a SmackDown for the next show. That's right. No, we're not. This is fucked. Well, There'll still be plenty to talk about, though. We got AEW right now. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. What are you going to do? Yeah. yeah, you know, we'll still be live on Thursdays. So That's we'll right. We'll make it work. That's right. So we'll just have to talk about it the next week, you know? Or we'll break, and, or, in, or we'll break in live. That's right. Or we'll break in live. You never know. Anything can happen. <laughs> All we got to do is turn on the gimmick right here. You never know. <laughs> and we're good to go. You know, we got a full full setup right here. We're ready. You know, get the get the cable right in there. So make sure you uh, hype, you know, hype. Listen to me. Here I go to this. We two weeks in a row. You're doing the hype, yeah. We're I got to hype. hype. Strike. Why don't you hype it? You know, we're hyping. <laughs> Follow the All social apart. media, you know, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Twitter, at to be Twitter blunt machine. podcast, the number two, two, that's right. two. you know, at to be blunt podcast.com. That's right. Make sure you uh, review and subscribe to our podcast. And if you like our podcast, man, leave a review because that's the biggest thing you could do for us. It's true. It's we true. We don't want you to support. We're not going to start a GoFundMe page. No, not at the all. The only thing we want. Is a review from you. That's right. Review yeah, and, and subscribe. Let's, let's get some callers in. And this might have been the first podcast that we didn't have that beat 
but I guess we'll save it for next week. Oh, That's uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we might, out. we might have to. That's it. From Frank Knox, from the Scott, and from your host, PD. We'll see you next week, episode 15, on the 2 Be Blood podcast. Ah, oh, here it is. Blood.